Good morning, it is filled to the brim and it is Wednesday, October 6 and we are talking about Christ in you, the hope of glory and specifically the ministry of the Holy Spirit, Christ in you. As a result of Christ in you, the Holy Spirit came, dwells in you right when you were born again and he has a work in our lives. There is a ministry that the Holy Spirit does in our lives. I'm going to read our foundational scripture Colossians 1.27, To them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. To make known. The Lord wants us to know what He has given to us. And one of the things, one of the most foundational, significant aspects to Christ in us is the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And today I want to talk about how the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of grace. The Spirit of grace. See, the Holy Spirit gives us grace for every situation in our lives. Let me say that again. The Holy Spirit gives us grace for every situation in our lives. And Jesus is full of grace and truth. And, and the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into truth. And I've referred to that already but the Holy Spirit gives us grace. So whatever you are going through, there is grace for that situation. No matter how painful it may be, the beauty of the Holy Spirit's ministry in our lives as a result of Christ in us is that there's grace for it. There is grace. And Paul writes about something that he was going through and had been going through and continued to be going through in 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10. And how he speaks about the grace of God being sufficient for him. This is what he says. Therefore, in order to keep me from being conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. So this is not a good situation. It is a torment to him. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses and in insults and hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak then I am strong. The grace of the Holy Spirit is present for every situation. And we are to receive that grace for our situations. Paul is speaking about that. That he says, I have weakness as a result of this torment, of this situation. And I have asked God to remove it. But his response is, the Spirit of grace is present there. That even though I am weak as a result of this circumstance, of this torment, even though I'm weak, the Holy Spirit's grace causes me to be strong through the power of the Holy Spirit. See, he says, Christ's power may rest on me. So that Christ's power may rest on me. That's what the Spirit of grace is all about. It actually helps us in these overwhelming times, in these times of pain and struggle, for Christ's power to rest on us. So we cannot, we do not have even the ability or human strength to handle the situation. And a lot of times we want to pray it away. We want to pray away the situation as Paul talks about. But rather... What God is doing is saying, let the spirit of grace be applied in your life. Let the spirit of grace, because you are actually going to be strong in the Lord. It's not in your own strength. You know, we just recently had a women's retreat. We posted some of the testimonies on the field to the brim. But during the women's retreat, the Lord gave me this, uh, this thing for us to do during worship. And I had all the ladies pull out a piece of paper and for them to draw a picture of themselves and put holes in their body 
where they've had some form of struggle. Maybe in their formation, maybe they had like an alcoholic parent, maybe they had something that they struggled with like an addiction in their lives, maybe they were assaulted, maybe some big things. And I had them put holes in their sketch of their body and then I wanted them to see that in those holes, the grace of God, the presence of God fills it. And in other words, there's just more of Jesus in them. The healing of God, the, the I am with you. This is what Paul is referring to, that we may have a lot of holes in our lives. We may have a lot of holes in our journey as a result of life circumstances, as a result of things that we don't have any control over, which is a lot of things, which is almost everything. But the Lord says in those situations, in those things, even the things that you personally struggle with, my grace is sufficient. The spirit of grace is present there to fill that space with my presence and with my power. It's not in your strength. It's in my strength. You're weak in this area, but my strength is present. As Paul writes, for when I am weak, then I am strong. So there's this recognition, the spirit of grace. What a beautiful, beautiful presence we have. Uh, the spirit of grace, the riches of heaven, of having the spirit of grace in our lives. We need Jesus daily. We need the unmerited favor of God. We need the undeserved favor of God daily. We will always need his grace. His grace is always present for us. No matter how much you mature in your faith, you will need, always need his grace in your life. And actually, I believe as, as you mature in your faith, you will have the revelation of how much grace you need in your life. Actually, you, you begin to see the levels, the measure of grace that you need in your daily life so that you can walk an overcoming life. See, we have this beautiful favor and gift to us, the spirit of grace that dwells with us for every circumstance in our lives. You know, Peter writes, 2 Peter 1 verse 2, he writes something very significant. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Savior. Grace and peace be multiplied to you. Recognizing we need to know that we need grace multiplied to us. See, grace, the spirit of grace meets us in our weaknesses and gives us Christ's strength. So we want the grace to be multiplied to us. You know, in the Old Testament, a scripture that's so frequently quoted, Zechariah 4, 6, and 7. This is what the word of the Lord says to Zerubbabel. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forward the top stone and amid shouts of grace to it. Grace to it. What are you to speak to your mountain? Grace to it. Not your own efforts, not your own strength, but rather his grace. His grace, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. The spirit of grace is what brings down the mountains of our lives, recognizing that it is not in our strength, but even it is in our weakness and in his strength, the recognition of our weakness and the embrace of the spirit of grace and as a result, we are strong because of the spirit of grace. And the spirit of grace is what takes down the mountains. Therefore, we cannot have a religious spirit that depends on ourselves, a prideful spirit, a humanistic spirit. Those are all enemies of the spirit of grace. We are to embrace this beautiful spirit of grace, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in our lives. What a beautiful person of the Holy Spirit that's dwelling in us, the gift that has been given to us by the Father, so that in our weakness, we can be strong. In our overwhelming circumstances, we have the Spirit of grace that says, I'm going to take down the mountains. I'm going to give you the grace for the situation. I want you to pray about this word. 
God bless you.